Hi folks, back with another video. Hope you're all keeping safe and well out there. This video is actually directed at Linux users, but Windows and Mac users are welcome to watch if you're interested to see what Linux offers or doesn't offer as far as system monitoring goes. So as some of you might know, I did buy a new case and some hardware for my computer, and I was very interested in just seeing what the temperatures were specifically of my CPU and the GPU and the fan speeds and how the you know the hardware was performing basically with with cooling now what you can see on the screen at the moment is NZXT's cam software this is available for Windows and it actually does exactly what I wanted really you can see the CPU load temperatures clock speed CPU fan the GPU fan RAM the whole lot. Uh, the only downside was is their software. Well, actually, I got it to to install and run under Wine, but what happened was it was only showing some of the CPU stats and not the GPU and a few other things. So you know what, it wasn't really going to work for me. Uh, a real pity because it's actually great software. Um, and then I started looking around just to see what was available on Linux, and my gosh, it was a bit of a dismal story at first. I was scratching around and looking and not really finding at all what I was looking for. So for example, you know, I did start off looking at things like HTOP. So these these types of software, most of the software on Linux actually, you've got to install something called LM-Sensors and then you run Sensor Detect and it will basically pick up from the various pieces of hardware what it can read and understand and then that that is then available it writes it to files and the software essentially is just reading from there and, and displaying in whatever format and now your option is you got to go look for what is going to show you what you want to see so htop for example like like this software it it again wasn't showing me what i wanted it was processes cpu load but where was my temperature where was my gpu that sort of thing so you know what that that wasn't going to work for me then i went and had a look at glances so glances again something similar in the terminal uh, screen <clears throat> and you'll see there top left it's got CPU memory it's got uh, CPU load it's got some GPU information over here interesting enough there's my GPU card there's memory there's the temperature over there um, so, so fairly what I was looking for but no CPU temperature for some reason I don't know why now this software for me wasn't really that easy. I'm not too sure how to configure it and I wasn't going to go r really seriously technical. So yeah, this also wasn't really working for me. Then I found something called, uh, let's just get P-Sensors up. So P-Sensor is sort of the go-to software as far as basics go. This is what you see. It, it's picked up from um, the LM sensors, all the various sensors that are available that it can find. And yes, it's showing actually what I need. Look there, CPU fan, that's the, this, this column here is the current immediate value. That's the min and max over the period of time. So CPU fan, for example, is 429 RPM at the moment. Its minimum was 387 and the max has been 430. I haven't taxed it yet. Chassis front fan, rear fan, temperature of the cores, the die temperature here is the main CPU temperature, the one we're going to actually look at. Gosh, that's actually exceedingly hot at the moment. That's quite strange. Um, oh, it's probably because I'm running Ob Studio for the recording. And there's the GPU again, temperatures, uh, memory, that sort of thing, uh, and the fans on the GPU as well. So it is picking up everything essentially that I need, uh, as well as hard drive temperatures. But the graphing side is the side that bothers me. What I'd want to have had there was to have been able to have a separate graph or superimpose CPU temperature with GPU temperature, for example. This is going to get too busy for me because as you start clicking on over here, uh, as you start clicking on more of the temperatures, you can see what's already happening. It's just too busy and too chaotic, really. It, it's not bad. I mean, it, it is giving me essentially what I wanted. And you can customize these descriptions and so on. But it's not really, it's again not what I wanted. So the interesting part was, 
Um, then I, after looking around at the, at the various options, and I was getting a bit desperate by then, I actually, something said, go look at the default system monitor that comes with KDE. Now there is a similar monitor like this for Debian and for Ubuntu and various of the others, depending on your distro. So you've, you've all got something like this. Now we're used to this process screen. This is the one we'll use normally to go and see uh, what is using up CPU load, what is maybe using the most memory to kill. Um, I can kill processes from here, anything that's hung, uh, for example. And we're also used to the system load screen where you can see the CPU usage memory swap. The one I'd never really gone and, ex and, and explored was the additional tabs. So this one, I've given it a custom, a custom name. Uh, I've named it called Sensors. You can actually go up here to Tab Properties, rename it. You can also adjust things like the number of rows and columns and the update interval. So you can widen or, or make this, this screen bigger if you want to. And what's also interesting here is it also shows you the various sensors that are available to you. You can see here on the right. And it is you can just drag things across and create whatever you're looking for actually. So I could take for example network interfaces or sorry yeah, network interfaces and if I wanted to look at incoming network traffic for example I could take the sensor oops sorry there we go data wrote where is it uh, data rate there we go and I can drag it in over there and I can say what sort of graph do I want a line graph a digital like above a bar graph or I just want to log it to a file and I'll say no I want a line graph and there it is it does it and if you wanted to superimpose that with the receiving and transmitting you could just take this you could take the data rate for transmit and you could drag it across there and there's the two of them in one graph you can right click on this and you can give it some other name uh, network for example sorry notice there's a bit of a funny thing here you've got to delete the text apparently network Oops. network and it's as easy as that basically what I did over here was I said these I've also named the CPU die temp, CPU fan, chassis fan front and rear. I could name them. I can also drag and superimpose these if I want to. What I did for this one, the digital one, I created a digital uh, graph, but you can see here you can enable alarms as well. So I've said to it, if it's between the limits of 30 and 70 degrees, color this green. If it's above 70 or below 30, which is not really relevant here, I suppose, color it red. And that's exactly what it's done here at the moment. It's above 70, so it's displaying in red. Normally, this would be in green. So, system monitor is not bad. It's actually doing mostly what I want. But guess what? There's something else that's not picking up here. For some reason, system monitor is not picking up all the sensors. So it doesn't pick up any of my GPU activities over here. So, one solution I found was I could have this on the screen. And I could have, there's something else called Green with Envy. This is another Linux app. And what it does is it works specifically with the, the graphics card. So you can have it activated for overclocking here. I haven't got the overclocking active at the moment. But you'll see it picks up all the detailed information about the graphics card. There's um, percentage utilization, memory. Um, there's the, fa the two fans as well stats, the temperature, uh, maximum, the shutdown temperature, slowdown, um, the clock speeds and various. You can also even control the fan profile manually here if you want to as well. So between the two of them, and it has got an option up here, you can see for historical data, which will show you the, um, the graph views actually as well. So you could also put this side by side with the system info and I'd have actually everything I want. And this was about nearly where I'd stopped and I thought, okay, that's it. Now these two, I could, rec I could still recommend them. If you wanted to have really no coding or, or text file configs or getting to, to that sort of level, I'd highly recommend you actually look at this. Use your basic system info and just customize and some of these to, your, you know, to, to, to the way you want them. And this Green with Envy app, running these two you'd probably do most of what you want there was one other thing i looked at there and i know that ubuntu has got it and a couple of the others 
it's in KDE under plasma, it's called thermal monitor. What it does is it will read, the, it will give you the option of reading and configuring most of the thermal temperatures on the computer. So from the CPU to uh, the GPU, to the motherboard temperature, hard, even hard drive temperatures, you can choose which you want. Click them on and they will actually appear on the panel at the bottom of the screen over here with the notifications. And that's actually quite handy. Then you've got at a glance, you can keep an eye on the temperatures as well. The problem is the latest version of it, is, well, the other way around, I should say, it's breaking with the newest version, I think, of Plasma. So a lot of people had reported problems with it and it was working for me a week or two ago and it suddenly wasn't working. So right now I can't use that. So I've got this option as I'm showing you now. And then I just discovered a lot of things came up about Conkey again. And I remember Conkey and I thought to myself, yeah, that actually sounded quite interesting. Maybe I should go and have a look at that. So Conkey is a free lightweight system monitor for X. That's the graphical display in Linux. It displays any kind of information on your desktop. So the takeaway here is it is it is highly configurable. You can configure it to do absolutely anything. You can go as deep as you want as well. So from the weather to hard drives to all sorts of things you want to display, you can get it to do anything. You can also theme it as well. And if you look over here, I'll put links to these sites below the video as well. For example, here they show the 15 best Conkey themes. And if you go down, there's quite a few nice modern designs. You can then customize these, obviously, uh, yourself. You could use them as is, and if they are working as is, you can just basically drop, drop in and go, really. But in many cases, you will probably want to uh, customize them, and that is going to require tweaking and editing of some of the, of some of the files. Although, the one I want to show you well, there's two really. The, the Conky does start off with a default, but it, it doesn't show terribly much information. The one I'll show you now is this one. This is actually quite an interesting one. Automatic. Automatic, yeah. So what it does is you, you basically down, you've obviously got Conky and, and so on installed. Once you've downloaded this automatic theme, you go to a directory, you run the start script file, start sh, and it reads your hardware and actually configures itself, which is quite incredible. So this one I could highly recommend because in most cases, it's going to work out of the box for you. In my case, and mine is AMD processor, Asus board, NVIDIA graphics card, and so on. What I discovered was basically out of the box, it ran perfectly. The only thing it wasn't displaying for me was the, C was the CPU temperature. And I went and added that myself. So this is the theme actually working um, and just have a look from here, the, the right hand side of the screen is that theme that I was talking about. It's populated everything here uh, automatically. The only thing I would probably want to maybe do here is just rename these drive mappings uh, or partitions that I've got set up. You know, I'd probably maybe just clean this up a little bit, but this is perfectly usable for what anybody wants to, to do. Um, this is the temperature I'm talking about. It wasn't showing this temperature. For some reason, the temperature wasn't pulling through properly. So I just did a quick edit to the config file and put the temperature in myself. But I've left everything else here is completely default. So yeah, I could recommend that. On the left hand side here, what you're seeing is this was essentially the basic conky screen that came up by default. And I then uh, yesterday I spent an hour or so learning Conky and I completely edited this myself. I rearranged. It's very easy. It's not that difficult to rearrange most of this. I think most of it's... I just added a few little extra things like this um, fan speed. I've put the RPM speed and I've added the uh, little, little uh, gauge over there basically. 
Um, what else did I do? I added the chassis fans and I've renamed a few of these things there. For example, I've named the file systems the way I'd like to see them and I want to know, I don't want to see a percentage free. I need, I need to know how many gigabytes I've got free on my partitions. I added these network up, up and down speed uh, graph. Most of this is just dropping in. It's not too too complicated, but I mean, you've got to probably spend an hour or two or three just sort of getting to know this, this, this sort of the language. It, it, it's, it's very much like HTML or something. You know, once you've learned it, it's not too difficult. So I can show you what the, what the config file looks like. So the standard config, config file for Conky will always look like this. Um, it's a text file. And you'll see it by default, it's saved in .config, it's in your home directory, .config slash conky slash conky dot conf and it always starts off with the first half of the file the conky config is the one that describes the location of the window how big the window is what the background color is is it a dock is it a is it a desktop is it a panel what type of window uh, the outlines uh, heights buffers um, whether it's transparent so that that's the top half of the file the second half of the file is conky.txt and essentially you're just defining here what color the text is going to be. So there for example is you'll see that's where the info part is up here. I've basically said make it color gray. There's the text info and then it's going to scroll um, various information across and these are variables that are built into conky. So think anything that's, that's conky underscore version with a uh, a dollar sign in front is going to pull the version there you can see it's scrolling it will pull the version number across the sys name is going to pull out I think uh, Linux whatever Manjaro and node name kernel and machine so these are just variables and you'll see further down here where I've got CPU for example I said their color at yellow um, I've said right a line over there and I've typed the name in manually, so I cheated there. I wasn't bothered to go and look for the the function to pull it out. But you'll see temperatures, for example. I'm pulling it from the sensors command. Linux, it's a sen um, everything in Linux writes to a file. So basically, you can just say to it, execute sensors, look for the word TDI, which is temperature. And from there, along that line, just cut the 16th to the 22nd character out. And it basically extracts then... Uh, this part, the temperature, 85.0 degrees. So, oh, and I put the uh, degrees Celsius, I think, on the end there somewhere. Uh, oh, no, I pulled it out from the from the text file. But that's in essence, this is the text that I used to create this um, display here on the left. So this was not too difficult, and it's got all the information that I wanted to see. Uh, I wanted GPU temperature, CPU temperature, utilization. I wanted to see the fan speeds, how they're performing. And for me, the, like I said, the drive space left this at the bottom, I would not necessarily want to have had, but I just left it in. So there's a, there's a incredible amount of additional information you can also include with Conky. But for my purposes, I was just looking for something that was going to give me the essential information I needed. Other people are putting weather forecasts in uh, RSS, news feeds, you name it. You can, you can really go to town with it. But so far, I'll probably use Conky for now, but um, it's just to give a quick overview really of what's available on Linux or what some of the options are. I know this is absolutely by no means everything that's available. There, there's tons and tons of things out there and I'm pretty sure people are going to reply and, and tell me I've missed a couple of other in, interesting ones. But um, yeah, just basically an overview to show you where I am at the moment then with system monitoring. And uh, Conky I'm quite enjoying. What is also nice with Conky is like this one over here, you can share these config files and themes and so on, and other people can download and and use them. And you know, if they're written generically enough, they will pull the relevant information out and um, and work straight from there. But if if Conky is is sounding a little bit too complicated or, or not really your cup of tea, like I said on Linux, it's certainly worth just looking at your system monitor. And there's quite a lot more that you can do to customize it and pull in the available sensors yourself. So um, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you in the next one.